Hello everyone, um, welcome to my channel. Ferrari has um, borrowed me a 296 GTS for a few days. I thought I'd give you a quick comparison, take you out on a drive, the sun is going down. Um, I collected this yesterday, I just haven't been able to drive it much. But I'm gonna give you some content, give you some footage on it. 296 GTS, I pulled my uh, SF90 out so we can get a quick comparison between the two hybrid Ferraris of the moment. And my thoughts and uh, first opinions, first feeling first vibe but let's get stuck into it the 296 harks back to Ferrari of the past uh, is a gorgeous looking car this being the GTS version it is a convertible I'll put the roof down for you in a moment it has a lot of cool aerodynamic features for example you have this nice aerodynamic section down here that allows you to channel air underneath the car together underbody to increase uh, aerodynamic grip you also have cool vents here that aren't just a design choice but they actually uh, cool the front brake calipers which is good for track competition time <laughs> track competition time is good for driving on the track you've got this nice little vent here that it gives a nice vintage feel as well the designs the look of the car the angles everything is very beautiful I think the SF90 looks significantly more aggressive I would say than this this is more of a beautiful car side by side you really see that they don't actually look alike whatsoever uh, maybe I'm just used to the SF90 but I can easily tell these two apart this is more flowy and this is a bit more angular it's still a very flowy design but uh, the front the lights everything about them is very very different in my opinion anyway uh, being a v6 engine Ferrari I think everyone was very skeptical of the 296 video and in photos the car doesn't look aggressive but it looks way better in real life I think if you can see it in real life really take the opportunity to go and look at one uh, a lot of people were like, oh, writing the car off, it's a hybrid, blah, 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 blah. But after driving it, I think that this car is incredible. The V6 is a 120 degree V. It's very, very wide, it's very flat. That allows it to lower the center of gravity, but it also sounds beautiful. They called it the Piccolo V12, a baby V12. And I don't think it sounds quite like a baby V12, but it is close. It definitely sounds better than the SF90, especially when you put the roof down. In fact, let me put the roof down now and uh, give you some roof down commentary sure if you can actually put the roof down from the keys the same key as the SF90 I'll try if I hold this does the roof go down no that would that would have been cool if the roof went down when you held this but so you turn the ignition on and then you press this button here and then the roof folds it does take quite that is the window <laughs> you press this button here and the roof does fall down it departs quite quickly and it leaves you with a nice open air feel it's not as fast as the roof on the 765 LT I think this roof probably takes about 15 to 16 seconds but it is fast enough once it's down the vibe of the car changes completely you can hear that v6 roaring behind you v6 roaring behind you is just something that I've never said before but you can hear that v6 roaring behind you and uh, you get the wind in your hair or I haven't got much hair but you get what I'm saying the car is stupendous people like I was saying were writing it off at first they were saying it's the baby Ferrari they were saying it's kind of irrelevant in the lineup Ferrari are doing what all brands are doing now they're displaying what the future of their brand will look like in a world of hybridization letting you and I know that even though things are changing even though things are looking to be more emissions regulated Ferrari are still putting their passion into their vehicles this car feels like a Ferrari, looks like a Ferrari, um, drives like a Ferrari, and it sounds like a Ferrari, well, a V6 Ferrari, but it is a very good car. I can reassure you that it's a very good car. The SF90 is powerful. The SF90 is a V8. This was their first attempt at a mass production or semi-mass production hybrid car, whereas this is supposed to be their new flagship, like mid-level Ferrari. It's not supposed to compete with the F8, but the F8 has been canceled now. So I feel like this is the new F8. This is the new 488 it's quite expensive I think they start around 250 with no options once you've optioned that up you can easily get into the 300s when I say 300s I mean the late 300s but it is significantly cheaper than the SF90 this car was like 500,000 pounds but it's got a thousand horsepower this has 830 horsepower but it feels like a thousand horsepower just because it's a little bit lighter than the sf90 uh, they have given me is in a blue corsair it's got these silver rims originally it had carbon fiber rims but giving carbon fiber rims out to customer is, is a bit of a risk because if you um, hit a pothole you will crack them but now let me talk you through a few things like storage space where the sf90 has electric motors on the front axle and this doesn't you do get significantly larger storage space in here 
you could fit uh, a lot in there. You, a whole person could fit in there. In here, you also have the charger. This is the spec overview, and I never realized this has the carbon under the front bonnet, which I've never really understood why anyone would get that, but it does look freaking cool when you open the bonnet. The SF90 storage space is about this deep, and it goes across, whereas here, where you don't have the electric motors, you get significantly more space. This will be good for going away on the weekends. Uh, this is a heavily spec car. I just noticed the spec sheet now. The area of the car has racing seats. These seats aren't as comfortable as the comfort seats in my SF90, but that's why they're called comfort seats. It's also crema, which is like this light sandy color. It looks really good. It's got the passenger display. It's got the same gear selector that you have in the SF90, that you have in the A12 Competizione, and that you have in the Ferrari Roma, and the cockpit is generally just the exact same as my SF90. If you've seen my channel where I've gone over my SF90, I went quite in depth with the system, so I'm not going to go over it again, but it looks good. I think these seats are the better looking seats, but comfort seats just make the car a lot more usable i sat in these seats for about two and a half hours yesterday although i wasn't in pain it's not something i would want to do often i think <laughs> these look nice but the comfort seats are the way to go yeah i think it's time to get it out on the road and take it for a little test drive it handles so well like compared to my sf90 the front end is so light you can kind of just throw the car around which is something that i haven't experienced in a car in a long time a lot of my cars are quite heavy the closest feeling to I you know what I've never driven anything like this first thing I'm gonna do is stop and get petrol and then from there Please, we are gonna head can out you better explain your request no Ferrari I can't because I haven't got a request I actually don't know where I'm going to go on this drive the car is very talky so my camera may move from its current position this car is incredible it handles so well where you haven't got the weight on the front axle like the sf90 it does just hook up a lot faster and um, the sf90 does do some trickery with the front electric motors that allow for like torque vectoring and kind of like this virtual wheelbase shortening effect uh, that it can do by sending power to each wheel that requests it but this is just that much better because the feel is a lot more natural that front end makes the car so eager to turn so eager to point it is coupled with that short wheelbase it's just an incredible driving experience i think everyone that was looking down on this car needs to kind of just get in one and drive it and see what it's really like because honestly this is out of this world i was not expecting the baby ferrari to perform like this but uh, it feels no slower than my SF90. With the roof down, it's a great experience as well. I think if you are looking for this car, if you can afford the extra to get the GTS, get the GTS, it's worth it. I'm a convertible hater and I'm loving this sound that I'm hearing from this V6. Onto that V6, it's a wide angled V6. Originally people were saying it's the same V8 that's in the SF90 and the Pista and all those other cars just with two cylinders chopped off. But here it is a 120 degree V giving you a wider angle that allows you to mount the engine lower and um, reduce the um, center of gravity of the car, which means that uh, it is flipping nimble. Um, I'll give you some more idea of how well this handles when I get to some roads where I can throw it around a bit. If I can make a little space for myself here, I will uh, allow you to appreciate the sound of this V6 because honestly, it is incredible. Crazy. I can't believe a V6 sounds like that. That is absolutely insane. Honestly, I'm blown away. It makes me want this car, but I have an SF90. Would I trade my SF90 for a 296? Well, that's a question I'll get to at the end of the video because right at this point in time, I probably can't answer you. Now, one thing that's really cool is that you can drive this full hybrid mode up to about 85 miles an hour. If I press this button here, the hybrid button, it allows me to shut the engine down and cruise along in silence and bliss where you can enjoy the I, sounds of road noise. But it's a Ferrari, so I will not be driving like that. Turn that V6 back on, let's go. Ah! Car does some big numbers. It does some big numbers. This is crazy. This is great. Oh, just bottomed out. Good. This in car is so good. The turning is so direct. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is incredible. This it, it is better. It's a better drive than my SF90. 
I would. Uh, it's safe to say he's a better driver than my SF90. I've got a Fiat Panda in front of me right now, so I'm gonna chill out for a second. This car is flipping incredible. Wow. It handles a lot better than my SF90. It feels faster. I think because it's the weight, it's, it just feels more eager to go. The engine is just ready. It's just like always, it feels like there's no turbo lag. And I think that's a part of the electric motor just filling that in, filling that turbo lag in to me, give you that naturally aspirated sensation. But this is out of this world, unbelievably good. I wish I could explain how I feel right now. I probably just sound stupidly excited. I just jumped out of my 765 LT and this is not as good, but for a car you could drive every day, I would say this is just as good as the 765. The 765, if you're driving 10 tenths, obviously you feel the speed, you feel that it's a lot faster, but right now, I don't need anything more than this. I need a 296. I, I've, I've decided I want a 296 now. This is probably one of the best cars I've driven in a very, very long time. Wow. This is a V6 that sounds like a quieter, less rowdy V12, but it does sound better than any. Oh my goodness, this car turned so well. You could feel the end was excited to get out there. I want to throw it around the corner, but again, Ferrari let me borrow this car. This isn't my car. So I'm trying to be well behaved. I'm like lost for words. That's how good this car is. I'm not even using bumpy road mode. That's how comfortable it is. This road is like one mile and straight. Qualifying mode, here we go. Let me put it into race mode. I've been driving around in sport mode. I didn't even realize. Wow, that's even faster. Flipping hell, I'm blown away. So, something that's really cool about the 296 is that the new brake by wire system that Ferrari are using allow each brake to operate individually, independently of one another, to ensure that when you're going around a corner, so if you brake on the straightaway and a corner's coming up and you start to turn, it will slowly release brake, brake force, to uh, give you basically a trail braking reasonably easily. You don't have to practice, it just kind of does it. And I felt it a few times, I thought, let me just brake and turn. You can feel the brakes slowly releasing themselves, allowing you... Jesus. Let's pass fast. The car's got a slew of um, new technology to make sure that your experience in driving it is always a comfortable and excellent one. I'm in race mode right now. This isn't their setup for your Rano pack, but this is um, comfortable. This is more comfortable than my SVJ in Strada, which is incredible. I, um, I will safely say I love this car. Uh, do I prefer this car to my SF90? I think I do. I think this is better than the SF90. Would I change my SF90 for this? I'm not sure. Maybe the 812. I don't drive my 812 as much anymore just because I've got so many cars that do... The 812 is a middle ground car. So the 812 has the V12, so it's rowdy like the SVJ, but not as rowdy as the SVJ. And it's a touring, but so it's comfortable, but not as comfortable as my SF90. So I find myself never using my 812 with something like this in the in the lineup as an addition i think my wife would love something like this i would love to drive something like this it's just an incredible car it's a phenomenal car definitely one of the best cars i've driven i think in terms of handling it's not as good as the 765 but it's close imagine like a 765 but dialed back i think ferrari have really stepped up their game here and they're really really showing people what they can do it's like wow the next the hurricane replacement is going to have to do a lot to be better than this i'll tell you that for free because this is out of this world absolutely out of this world but for now i guess i'm going to sign out and check off i've got to drive home i'm going to pick up my wife and take her out in this because she needs to experience how good this car is for now thank you for joining me on this quick overview of the 296 i haven't had it for that long so if i've missed anything out i'll try and cut it in or splice it in I also have to give this back car back soon, but I'm super busy. I've got obviously my newborn son. I've just picked up the 765 LT. So I haven't had much time to really get to grips with this car, but taking it on a drive now, 
phenomenal phenomenal i would give this car a solid nine out of ten i think the only thing that lets it down for me is i feel like the design could be a bit more aggressive but that will be the version speciale but it's scary to think how quick the version speciale is going to be i think they don't even have to increase the speed just give it a bit more aero and this car would probably outdo most 400,000 500,000 pound supercars it's out of this world honestly it is just on another planet there's no lambo that can touch this there's no ferrari that could touch this this is just incredible and i really if you can take it for a test drive if you can afford one trust me just get it because it is incredible but for now sayonara and so long thank you for joining and have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day peace like and subscribe please i need subscribers <laughs>